Well, in the land of programmable robots, God, there's so many. There's no way we're going to catch them all. Uh, you know, roughly the other day, I was talking about, well, let's just walk over there. I was talking about Z-Man, the brain, and that was from 1956, right here. And the thing about Z-Man was, when you lift this head back, there are 20 switches up there that you set. There's a mechanical sequencer that then selects through the switches. And so this was one of the earliest programmable toys, since you actually program how it moves, to come out. And then there were things that... Oh, where is it? It's down here somewhere. Oh, we can see the back of them here. Let's go around to the other side. Got Remco, Mr. Brain. It's, the word programmable could mean different things. In the case of the Remco on, you put different disks into his chest area, and I did a video on this as well, to program the movements of the robot. It's You don't really program it so much as you're putting in the disk, but then again, the disk is the program, so yeah, it's programmable. So. The first one, the Z-Man, that's an electromechanical programmable. The, the brain is just a CAM programmable. Then uh, you got around in the 1980s and, and Tomy came out with all of their different ones, the little Omnibots and the Robbie Juniors and the Heroids and all of these, which you could program, but they were kind of an analog system. Basically, they had a cassette player built in them. And that, and you programmed it. I got to do this with one hand. There we go. The uh, the program, the transmitter would send DTMF tones, which is telephone touch tones, and it would record those on the on the tape. In fact, it's a stereo tape, so one track would have touch tones, and the other track could have your voice or music or whatever you wanted. But uh, they are programmable. But they're not exactly digital. It's kind of an analog programmable, which was an interesting step in there. This guy's programmable too, but I can't remember his name or where his box is, but he's, he's around here somewhere. Then of course there was um, all kinds, where are the larger ones? All kinds of large programmable robots, because you had your large Omnibot 2000 right there. And it works exactly the same way that the uh, small Omnibots did. But then you had uh, Big Macs. Now, Big Macs differed from the uh, Tomy things in that it's all digital. If I remember right, it had a Z80 computer inside it or something like that. Anyway, it's a fully digital programmable robot. And it's actually more sophisticated and costs quite a bit more money. And I think it was only sold through uh, Sears. And uh, then you kind of move away from the toy stuff and you get into the kits like the RBX-5 and uh, you got your Topo. And you get all your uh, hero Heathkit type robots. They're all programmable as well. But they're not really toys so much as educational tools. Um, there's some more, there's something I'm looking for along here, somewhere, here we go. This guy here, his box back there, that was, I'm going to try and look at the piece of paper. E-L-A-M-I. Alami, Alumi. Anyway, it's all programmable. You have the uh, touchpad on the front, and you can program all kinds of sounds and lights and motions and facial expressions. It has an LCD screen on the front of it. There were, um, all of these guys are programmable. You've got your CompuBots, a couple of different versions. You've got your big CompuBot 2. Again, they all have touch pads where you program different things in. Um, one of these had treads, if I remember right. Yep. This one has rubber treads on the bottom. This one has wheels on the bottom, but they both have a programmable points there. And what were they? They were CompuBot 3s. So you got your CompuBot 1, CompuBot 2, and CompuBot 3s. And here we have this strange little guy. He's obviously all programmable. 
What about this? Here we go. Microbot programmable. Those are all digitally programmable, but there was also... I've got it around here somewhere. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I want to think it's over on this side. It's a cassette robo. It's very small. You put uh, these little cassettes into it to program its actions. But in reality, inside the cassette, there is just a round cam. So it's very much like the early Remco Mr. Brain that we already looked at. It's still with its box. I know it's uh, mint in box wherever it's at. I want to think at one time it was here. It might have gotten moved to another area in the building. But if I remember right, it was just called Cassette Robo. Could, could be over here. Let's take a look on this side. It's small enough that uh, I could actually be looking right at it and not, uh, not even realize that I'm staring at it. Okay, I don't know where it is. Wait a minute, this is starting to look like a uh, laser bot, bots. See, that's what I get for not uh, pre-planning these uh, these things out. <laughs> if I take the time to uh, pre-plan what I'm going to talk about and show you before I start, things would go a whole lot smoother, wouldn't they? Well, it's not uh, it's not popping into my vision. We probably walked right past it and looked right at it. Because usually my gut feelings on these things are right. If I'm thinking it's in that area, it's probably in that area, and we probably looked right at it. You know what? It, it's small. It's like one of these right here. In fact, these are them. Here they are. There's a bunch of them. See that box up there that says disk spot? Here's a box up here that shows it's upside down, I realize, but you can see three different cassettes and it's showing directions. I actually see six different cassettes. And here's another one, disk spot. These are them. There's a whole bunch of different ones, four of them actually, right here. That one's called Cassette Robo, this one's called Crazy Bot, this one's called Cam Disc. You got all of these different ones and you plug the little cassettes, this one, see there's nothing in that one, these ones all have something already plugged into them and they uh, are programmed that way and perform the function that's on the disc. And even though that's upside down, that gives you an idea where you can get different paths, straightforward, turn, circle, just all kinds of stuff. So, there you go, four different versions. I knew they were over here. Like I say, I can be looking right at stuff and uh, not even realize it. Well, I'm sure we haven't even, even roughly touched on all of the various different types of programming robots, but uh, I think that's probably about enough for this video.